Chemistry, we're on to a new unit, Unit 6, in which we're going to take a deeper dive into covalent and ionic compounds. Uh, this first lesson is on naming compounds. So ionic compounds consist of a cation, a metal, and an anion, a nonmetal. When naming ionic compounds, the cation is named first and retains its original name. The anion is named last, and the end of the anion's name is changed to I-D-E, I. -D -E, I. <clears throat> so here's some examples. Sodium and chlorine. The cation is the sodium. It's over on the left side. That's the one that gives up the electron. The anion is chlorine. That's the one that gains the electron to become an anion, and it's um, it becomes chloride. So the compound formula is NaCl and the name is sodium chloride. Potassium and fluorine. Potassium retains its original name. Fluorine becomes fluoride. There's the formula KF. It's potassium fluoride. Magnesium, oxygen. Magnesium retains its original name. Oxygen becomes oxide. It's MgO and it's magnesium oxide. Lithium and sulfur. Lithium retains its original name. Sulfur becomes sulfide, Li2S, and that's lithium sulfide. Some transition metals have more than one charge state. For example, iron, which is Fe on the periodic table, can be ionized to 2 plus or 3 plus. It's not something that you could figure out the way we were able to with the first two columns and the last six columns just by counting how many spaces over to the nearest noble gas. You just have to have a table that does this and your charge number by ion sheet will do this. So the two plus three plus meaning that an, the atom loses either two or three electrons. When naming an ion with more than one charge state, a Roman numeral is used in the name. So I is one. II is 2, III is 3, V is 5, and 4 is the V but with the I before it. That means it's a subtraction. So it's IV and that would be 4. Iron can form two different compounds with oxygen. So let's look at those. You can have iron and oxygen and you can have iron 2. That means it's the 2 plus charge iron. If it's the two plus charge iron, it's going to form with a two minus oxygen. Oxygen is always two minus. Again, go to your charge number by ion or just look at your periodic table. It's two elements over from neon, the nearest noble gas. So it's going to gain two electrons. So iron's going to give up two electrons. Oxygen's going to gain the two electrons. So it's simply FeO. You need one of each to match up the charge balance. And that's iron two oxide. You don't put the Roman numeral in the compound formula, the FeO. You put it in the name when you actually write out the name in words. Okay, now we're going to take another combination of iron, another um, compound of iron and oxygen. Now we're going to use iron 3. So that's going to also become an oxide. But we think about it, iron 3, you're going to need two of them, and that would make iron 6 plus. Oxide is 2 minus, so you're going to need three of those. To, to make the oxide six minus balance with the iron six plus. Again, remember the crossing arrows. So the three on the iron goes over to the oxygen subscript and the two on oxygen, the two minus goes over to the Fe. And so you have that and it's iron three oxide. Here's some more examples, copper, Fluorine, so copper can have a charge of one or two. You can look on your charge number by ion sheet. It's the only way you can know what these different charges are. You cannot figure these out for the transition metals. Okay, so it's copper two. The anion is fluoride. So fluorine has uh, one minus charge, so you're gonna need two of them. Two one minuses in fluorine to balance the two plus in copper, and that's copper two fluoride. Titanium, chlorine, we're going to use titanium four. Chlorine has a one minus charge. So you're going to need four chlorines to match up with the titanium four plus. So four plus and four times one minus balances. So it's titanium four chloride. 
cobalt, bromine. We're going to use cobalt 2. Bromine has a 1 minus charge, so you're going to need two bromines to match up with the cobalt. So it's COBr2, and that's cobalt 2 bromide. There is an alternate nomenclature, that means a naming system nomenclature, for transition metals with two main charges. The lower charge number uses the suffix us, and the higher charge number uses the suffix ick. Now this is rarely used anymore, but you will still see it, and so you should be aware of what it means. So FeO, so that means we're using iron 2, that's the lower of the two numbers, so that's iron 2 oxide. 2 plus on the iron matches up with the 2 minus on the oxygen. So since that's the lower of the two numbers, 2 plus, 3 plus, that's going to be ferrous oxide. Fe2O3, now that means the iron is iron 3 oxide. That's the higher of the two numbers, 2 and 3. So this one is 3. So that's going to be ferric oxide. Uh, cuprous, uh, this is a Cu2O. Let's just go to it. So this is copper 1 oxide. That's the lower of the two numbers because copper can be either one or two. So that's going to be cuprous oxide. CuO is, means it's copper two oxide. The two plus of copper matches with the two minus of oxygen. And so that's the higher of the two numbers, one or two. And that's going to be cupric oxide. Lead chloride. So this is lead four chloride. Lead can either be two plus or two or four plus. This is the four plus. So you're going to need four chlorines to, to match it. So it's the higher of the two numbers. So it's plumbic chloride. That's a Latin word, and that, that's uh, the name for lead. Okay, now you have PBS. So this is PB2, and sulfide is a 2 minus. So 2 plus 2 minus match up PBS. So those are, that's the lower of the two numbers between 2 and 4. So that's going to be plumbus sulfide. SNO, SN is tin. Okay, that's going to match up. That's tin two oxide. That matches up one to one. And so that's the lower of the two numbers for tin. So that's going to be stannous oxide. SNF4, so that means you're going to have tin four and then four fluoride ions to balance that out. Tin four fluoride. That's the higher of the two numbers for tin. So that's going to be stannic fluoride. Mercury, 2 oxide, so mercury is a plus 1 here. That's the lower of the two numbers, so that's going to be mercurous oxide. And finally, mercury and sulfur, which would be make mercury a 2 plus ion to match up with the 2 minus of sulfur. And so that's going to be mercuric sulfide. All right, so occasionally you'll see those names and you should be familiar with them. Now we're going to get into naming covalent compounds. Covalent compounds consist of two nonmetals. Covalent compounds use prefixes, words that are attached to the front of a word, to indicate the number of atoms. The prefixes are, here they are, one is mono, two is di. Sometimes two can be expressed as bi, bi. In this case, it's di. It can be sometimes one, sometimes the other, but in this case, it's always di. Three is tri. 4 is tetra, 5 is penta, 6 is hexa, 7 is hepta, 8 is octa, 9 is nana, and 10 is deca. So the rules for naming covalent compounds are the least electronegative atom, which is usually the central atom, is listed first. Use the proper prefix in front of the element. Exception, do not place mono in front of the first element. Three, add the suffix after the, the word "-ide", to the end of the last atom. Note, unlike ionic bonds, which consist of two atoms and are charge balanced, covalent bonds can consist of many atoms and can produce ions. Okay, H2O. It, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen, so it's dihydrogen monoxide. So take the O off of mono when applied to oxide. So instead of monooxide, it's monoxide. Carbon dioxide. It's not monocarbon dioxide. You don't attach mono to the first uh, to the first element, the carbon in this case. Sulfur trioxide right there. 
not monosulfur trioxide. Dinitrogen tetroxide. Take the A off of tetra when applied to oxide. So again, that's two nitrogens and four oxygens. So dinitrogen tetroxide. Carbon tetrachloride. And finally, we have IF7. That's iodine heptafluoride. Now, if you look at your 60 common ion sheet, you're gonna come across these, uh, what are called molecular ions. And they are covalently bonded, but they are ions. They have a charge to them. Most of them come from acids, and you'll learn that when we get to our unit on acids and bases. Well, so let's learn how to name those. So bromate is BrO3 minus. These are all one minus charges, by the way. Iodate is IO3 minus, so it's a one minus charge in this column. Nitrate is NO3 one minus, and chlorate is ClO3 one minus. So that spells B-I-N-C, that's bink for the first column. The two minus charges are sulfate, that's SO4 two minus, carbonate CO3 two minus. So that's the SC, just think of Southern California. And finally, there's only one three minus charge. Again, it comes from a dissociated acid molecule, and this is PO4 three minus. So bink SCP, however you can remember that. The only thing you gotta keep straight is the chlorate from the carbonate. The chlorate is the one minus and the carbonate is the two minus. So the way you name different compounds with these molecular ions is you memorize you memorize the first, the, um, the eight, with, in this case, carbonate. So the formula for that we saw from the last chart is CO3 two minus. So you have to memorize that one. So memorize the eight ions, which you just learned on the previous slide. Now, if you add one oxygen to it, you have CO4 two minus. Notice that the charge has not changed. All you've done is add an oxygen. So that's gonna be called, that's one more oxygen than eight, and that's called per carbonate. Now, if you subtract an oxygen, so it's one less oxygen than eight, that's called carbonite with an I. If you subtract two oxygens from the carbonate, that's the one you have to memorize at the beginning, you get CO two minus, that's two less oxygen than the eight, and that's called hypocarbonite. The word hypo or the prefix hypo means underneath, like a hypodermic needle is something that goes under your skin. So that's hypocarbonite. The charge on the ions does not change, only the number of oxygens. Okay, let's do sulfate. What is that? That was part of the SC in the middle, so that's gonna be a two minus. So it's SO4 two minus. We memorize the eight. Now, if you add an oxygen, it's SO5 two minus. That's per sulfate. So one more oxygen than eight. Now we go down below and do one less oxygen than eight. That's SO3 two minus. That's gonna be sulfite with an I, sulfite. And that's one less oxygen oxygen than eight and finally two less oxygens than the eight is so2 two minus and that's going to be hyposulfite and that's two less oxygen than eight all right so that takes care of a quick lesson on naming it'll take a little time to get used to these you can always look them up if you need them don't worry about having them memorized right away eventually you'll get used to them